we're going to do a, a bonus question here for uh, the channel. Um, a previous guest on this show, and this is this is going to be a complete out of left field question. I don't know if you're ready for this at all, but I live, live in left field. Uh, a previous guest on the show is an author named Austin Trunick, who's been on the show before to talk about uh, this book series he's been publishing. He has two out, and he's working on the last one about the full history of a film studio that was fairly notorious in the 80s, Canon Films. Yeah, I know. Canon produced a film called A Man Called, Man Called Sarge. Which starred one Gary, Gary Kroger. Now, I haven't seen it, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's a, a fun memory or if it was stressful or whatever, but I, you know, tell me, what can you tell me about working for specifically Canon? Because that's, that's just a little odd. Golan Globus. And so we Man made Globus. the film in Israel. Okay. When you were in, this was the late 80s, I believe. First of all, the experience was fantastic. And it's a funny film. It never made any noise. And if you were to rent it or it comes up on Netflix someday, you'll go, okay, half of it was really funny. Half of it was stupid. Sure. You know, you're, you're not going to have a, a fest and, and include it with The Godfather. Let's put it oh, that okay. way. <laughs> but, you know, if you're in the right mood, in other words, really stoned, you might really enjoy it. But it was a, an incredible experience to make. And I was the star of it. And when you're making a Golan Globus film in Israel, you get whatever you want. I mean, it was a small budget film, but in Israel, with this production company, the production value was huge. Huge. So the cinematography and the things that we had to play with, the tanks and the everything were absolutely like an epic World War II movie. What well, a, a low budget, but a much bigger budget than the teeny infinitesimal budget that we made it on. Sure. And you, you get into the, the, the best hotels and the best restaurants and all that. It was wonderful. They were very generous producers. That's fascinating because, I, and it must be because they filmed it in Israel that you had got to enjoy that dynamic because I've, I've talked to some other people and I've, I've read Austin's books and when they've filmed in the United States or in other places, their reputation is that of being extremely uh, cheap and, 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 yes. and difficult. With There's with no question that that reputation existed, still yeah. exists, probably deserved because I've heard it so many times. And in fact, I was hesitant at the time going, Oh my, how, oh, how cheap is this thing that I'm going to do? But and, and I didn't interface with them, but it was yeah. their production. And everybody knew this is a Golden Globe production in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, wherever we were, Arat. Um, and we were just treated so well. Oh, cool. So How well. Did you get the part? Um, you know, well, I had done a movie with the writer-director named Stuart Gillard, a Canadian, who directed me in The Return of the Shaggy Dog just a few couple of years earlier for Disney. And we became very, very good friends. And I still went in and read for him, but he, because I'm not the guy you'd necessarily hire to be some butch, John Wayne, macho soldier, leader of a, you know, a band of renegades in World War II. But he knew that he could work with me and that I would bring him new things. So we had a lot of fun making this movie, but it, it was sort of given to me, but really based on work that I had done with the director. Oh, okay, but but largely overall a positive experience. Yeah, absolutely, oh, a, a completely positive experience, except the flight home, because oh. yeah, for some reason maybe this was the cheap part of going Globus. We didn't get first class tickets going home, right? Which oh. is fine. I don't demand first class. That's but awesome. one of the co-stars was a wonderful guy named Travis McKenna, who was about four hundred and fifty pounds. So if you're in a coach seat next to a guy who's 450 pounds flying across the Atlantic, it was not a comfortable ride home. That was the only complaint that I had. 